All right. Yes. Time for Automate That, the automation recipe segment of Growth Decoded. I am joined, as always, my friend, Cody Lindley. Cody, how are you today? I'm doing great, Ernie, my friend. How are you doing? I'm doing swell. We have learned a lot about landing pages, how they work, why you would use them, how to automate them. And uh, well, I guess now we're about to find out how you would automate them. We would find out why you want to automate them. But now let's get into the how. Uh, as always, uh oh, there we go. All right, let's redo that intro. I don't know what I was saying. Let's go back. <laughs> let's go back. I'm also going to tell you welcome to the kitchen at some point. I've decided. Oh, welcome to the kitchen. Love it. <laughs> okay. Yes. Hello, welcome back to Automate That, the automation recipe segment of Growth Decoded. I am joined now, as always, by the Active Campaign Marketplace Manager, my friend and yours, Cody Lindley. How are you today? I'm doing great, Ernie. How are you? And welcome to the Recipe Kitchen. Oh, it is good to be here, as always. And I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Uh, I'm excited to jump into this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today's episode topic, landing pages. We've learned what they are, why you would use them, why you would automate them how to write them, how to design them. And I'm very, very excited to jump in and see what we can do here um, with landing pages on the back end of Active Campaign. As always, Cody and I, chef hats. To, and now real hats. Regular, and real hats. Multiple hats. So, Cody, like I said, we're talking about landing pages. Um, mm -hmm. By the end of this, what are we, what are we going to be able to do? By the end of this, you're going to be tying landing pages a very powerful feature of Active Campaign to your CRM and automating that CRM. Another powerful feature of Active Campaign. It's going to be great. You're going to see how automation can tie a lot of different things together and how we can just, once it's set and ready to go, your job's done. It's going to be going while you're sleeping or enjoying your meal. Another food metaphor. <laughs> I, I love it. Uh, keep them coming. Okay, perfect. So without any further ado, recipe reveal time. What are we looking at this week, Cody? We're going to be looking at pages, deal creation, automation recipe. Uh, the back of the baseball card stats, as you see it over there on the right, real quick before we get into stats, let, I wanted to mention, it's not actually going to be much more than this. This is the automation. Again, you know it, you love it, simple and powerful, but with the ability to customize a lot, as we'll go over in the journey of the recipe later. Uh, the link at the bottom leads to our marketplace page for this recipe. Now the stats. Industry, this is great for any industry. If you're using a CRM, you can use this recipe and it'll be super powerful for you. Features, uh, we got pages, deals, and tasks. Use case, ops, there's a lot happening on the back end. We're creating this deal, but since it's also you know CRM related, we're gonna be sales. Experience level, growth. Now, we just wanna highlight, this doesn't mean that the automation recipe is harder to set up than any others. It just means there's some processes outside, which is the setting up of that landing page, which throughout the rest of the episode, you've already learned how to do. Stage of the customer journey, reach and engage. You know, some people think of convert and close, but this is going to be more often used for the beginning of a deal's life cycle than the end. So we look at it as reach and engage. I love it. This uh, looks to be the automation that really fills in your pipeline when someone, when some contact, whether it is a new visitor or an existing lead has taken an action that indicates some level of intent that you would want to, you know, follow up with them, uh, maybe upsell them, try to sell them, have a conversation, open that dialogue. Love it. Okay. So talked about it a little bit, but what else does this recipe let us do? Yeah, at the very baseline, we get to create a deal and track its life cycle using our powerful CRM. This is how you're, as you said, Ernie, we're going to start filling that pipeline with interested leads. It's great. And then next thing, because you're using our pages feature, which I personally am such a big fan of, you know, you got to build this beautiful looking landing page that is, you know, you can start showing them your templates, your voice, and you can also start setting expectations of what their time with you is going to look like, you know, let's say you, do, you have an email series that runs alongside this. That's like either product awareness or perhaps, you know, encouraging people to sign up for your program. Those are things that you can put on that landing page. So no one's surprised later on. They know what they're getting into, which also makes them highly intent, pardon me, high intent deals, which is amazing. They know what they're signing up for. And that means they want to hear from you. And then of course, last but not least, create a kickoff task for your new deal. And then use that task to automate their life cycle. Wanted to call out this link actually leads to our last episode of Automate That, where we show how you can actually just use a series of tasks 
to automate moving deals through your pipeline, uh, which ties in beautifully with this. You can think of this as a step one to that step two. Yes, absolutely love it. Um, and, and we have talked to, to Joel Klecky, uh throughout this episode about different copywriting strategies and best practices to use. So I really love that point here. Uh, the second one, set expectations and introduce your brand voice um, absolutely gives you an opportunity to do all of that. And then just to highlight that third point again, you know, two automations, right? This automation recipe, last week's automation recipe, you can really start to see the power of automation in terms of, you know, just a few little processes will take care of so many different tasks and be able to move deals from visitor stage to submitting the form to becoming a lead to becoming a works deal and all the way through that sales pipeline and, and sales process. Uh, really awesome stuff here. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look if we were at the automation store, what's going in the cart? Hey, you know, we're making sure that the automation budget isn't too, uh, too much. It's only Love three that. action, three things. Love it's that. A tag added trigger, which will work with the pages, a create deal action and an add task action as well. Okay. Again, small, but mighty. I love these. Um, all right. We've, we bought the ingredients. We've got them home. They're on the counter. Mise en place. What do we got to do first? Mise en place time. We're going to design our landing page using pages. Uh, the reason we do this is a twofold. We think that while creating your page, the idea of what that sales process will look like is probably going to become a lot clearer for you as well. Um, as well as you need the page live to be able to set up the trigger or not live, pardon me. Don't set it live yet, actually. But you need the page built out to set up the trigger for your uh, automation. But here we again say don't set it live yet because well, you can put the page life, you don't have the actual deal creation set up until this automation is set up. So you want to make sure everything's good to go and you can push it out all at once. The second point here, ensure your CRM is set up with the pipeline and stages you want. You know, this goes back to thinking about how you want that process to go. What stages do you want them to go through during their time in your pipeline? What leads to success for you? Mm. This is also a great call out. The sub point, you get to define the task that you want to be the entry point for these new deals into your pipeline. That sentence sounds really simple and obvious, but let's take a step back. What we mean is since you're using pages, you have this high intent. You might even say, sign up to talk to us about a specific stage later on. So you really wanna think this task, what is it? And where does it put someone in my pipeline to get started? Because you don't wanna have someone sign up, be real interested, and then treat them like a cold lead like you would in the first stage, perhaps. If it's just someone that your sales agent met and is reaching out to, you know, so we want to make sure you're really thinking about that process so you can get the most out of this automation. Yes, such a great point. And we've and we've kind of talked about this throughout the episode is the idea of singularity as it pertains to landing pages, right? Having one landing page per campaign. So if you're if you're making paid ads and they click through based on your paid ad copy, they don't come to a landing page that has nothing to do with what they just clicked on, um, you know, promising one thing, writing to one person. Um, offering one thing. And then here is taking it even a step further is even having a dedicated pipeline that would be specific to that campaign, right? You know, if you're running different campaigns, you're offering different things with your landing pages, whether it is a consultation, or it is just a sign up to learn more, or, you know, whatever the case may be, you might want to have a specific landing page, or sorry, a specific sales pipeline with different stages that are, you know, corresponding to whatever it is that you're offering. So I uh, really love this point here. And it's a it's a point that could often be overlooked. Yeah, real quick call out before we go to the next slide. Something I had wanted to mention earlier too about using pages for this process, because it's so beautifully templated and then you can control the messaging. What I like to say is you can bring the power of a, and look of a marketing campaign thought out for months and months and months. You can bring that to a, as simple as a process as just creating a new deal. And people mm -hmm. already think they're a part of this great big thing without having to like get all your teams together to figure out a look or a design, you know, just designing a simple page then ensuring those emails align with that look, it'll feel like a targeted campaign, which is huge. Yes, absolutely. Great call out. Okay. So we've got everything home. We've got everything set up. Take us through the journey. Where do we of start? Course. Where do we end? Yes. Uh, you know, as I said earlier, what we saw was basically it. So the uh, trigger at the top uh, when someone submits a landing page, they'll get a distinct tag added saying they have submitted that landing page. That's why we create it uh, before we import this recipe. And you'll be using that tag at the very top to add people to this uh, automation. Then we go to an add deal action. 
that's where we're going to create the deal. You're going to set, you know, the value, what stage, what pipeline they're going into, all that great information, who you want the owner of the deal to be. And then our third and last uh, action is going to be add task. You know, we have call, you might have a meeting, you might have even just an introductory email, uh, but that's where you're going to set the task that's going to be um, happening uh, afterwards. And it's great. Now, if we wanted to, let's say, uh, salt this recipe to taste, to continue mm -hmm. the food metaphor, um, and we wanted to add some customization here. Now, if somebody submits a form, the information, whether you're asking for you know, their name, phone number, email, maybe some other yes, no questions, or just some general specific information, general specific, just some specific information about that contact and why they're filling it out. Would this be the automation where you would pull that, that info uh, into the, the contact fields, or would that be somewhere else? That's a great call out, Ernie. Uh, you definitely could do that in this action, in this automation, if you wanted to. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan. I've said it on the show before of having different processes and different automations that can all go at the same time. But that way, you're just making sure that everyone's just worried about solving their own process, not going to others. But as you said, if we want to add some seasoning on this, you could put in a welcome series here. You could put in um, more, as you were saying, like syncing fields on the back end, more ops. You know. Um, this is just the base level of creating that deal and creating that first task. But there's no reason, as we've always said, you get an automation into your account. At that point, it becomes yours to do with whatever you want. You know, you can add any action, add another trigger, do, go just absolutely wild with it. But yeah, you could definitely build that in if you don't already have that in another automation. You just want to make sure you're not doing double work if, you've, if this is a later automation you're setting up. But if you don't have it, this would be a beautiful automation to set it up in, yeah. Yeah, perfect. And, and that just, you know, is, is a good rule of thumb to have as we're talking about automation recipes in general. If you like it a little more spicy, go ahead and add that spice. If you like it more salty, add that salt. Uh, really make it your own and make it work for you and your business and the different processes you are working to automate. So we've got this pages automation down. What are some other automations that you might want to use if you were using pages? Yeah, we wanted to highlight, you know, how you can use pages in a lot of different ways. So first up, Pages product announcement flow. It's a product you haven't even announced yet. You're building the mystery. You say, hey, in April, we're going to release a brand new product. You're going to want to know about it. People sign up. They get an email letting them know, yep, you signed up perfectly. Maybe you build out a couple of teaser emails in there too. And then a wait step has them wait until that specific date that you're making the announcement. And then everyone at once who signed up will get that brand new announcement. We're releasing product X that will change your life and everyone will go wild. Pre-order it, it'll be great. Uh, and then of course, secondly, we've got pages membership onboarding. Uh, this one's kind of cool. You can do one of two things. You can either gate it and send it only to members to then have them provide more information and get a series about being a member. Or you know, if you're trying to get just your normal contacts just to be members or anyone can sign up to a member, you don't have to gate it. You can have it be a page. Again, mainly what's gonna happen, people are gonna sign up to become members. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna send them a series of emails preparing them, setting expectations, and letting them know next steps they need to take on their end as well. And then, you know, last and finally, we again wanted to call out the move deal to the next stage when task is complete. Um, that is a beautifully simple automation we went over last time that just helps you automate your entire pipeline uh, with, you know, as soon as the task is complete, move them to the appropriate next stage. It's really easy and with just like, like Ernie said, with these two simple ones, uh, simple automations, you can automate your entire sales process, take out a lot of those manual tasks. And no reason you couldn't add more to that flow as well to have a lot of processes all automated at once. I, I love all three of these recipes because they all make the customer experience more positive or, or less, there's, there's less friction, right? Um, with the product mm -hmm. announcement, you are letting people know about something that they might be interested in. You're communicating with them through the entire journey. Uh, membership onboarding, you're making it very easy, removing any friction or barriers or obstacles from that process. And then with this third one, you know, making sure that your leads are getting followed up with when they need to be. When you finish a task, you know, we're human. We make mistakes. Maybe you forget to add another task. Maybe you forget to move that deal to the next stage, but this automation is going to take care of that for you. Um, so I love all three of these. This is, you know, looking at landing pages through the lens of how do they improve the customer experience? And there's just a, a ton of different ways that they do that. So Cody, thank you very much, my friend. Always a of pleasure course. talking with you. Thank you, Ernie. Have a great day. And that is that. Automated.
Hi, thank you for watching. If you are enjoying Growth Decoded, you can find a link in the description to sign up and join the Grow Team. You'll get exclusive content and opportunities that have to do with the show. You can also hit the subscribe button for Active Campaign's YouTube channel somewhere down here, and you will never miss an update from us.